Hello there and welcome to Web Dev Stuff. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the Graph CMS in a local PHP web development environment. I'm going to be using MAP as my server. I like to use this because it's available for both Mac and Windows. So if you're on a PC, you can download the same software and install Graph exactly as I am. Once you have that set up, you should be able to view a web start page like this one. And if you click on the first link here that says my website, you'll get an index of and then a blank page. You may already have a server set up, so there could be directories shown here. I'm using this as a fresh install, so I don't have anything currently in my localhost folder. Depending on how you have your web uh, preferences set up, you may have a different folder name. I just use uh, localhost. To get started, we're going to click on the download link here at the top of getgrav.org. And we're going to install the GravCore plus the admin plugin. If we just install the GravCore, we get simply the files of the CMS. The admin plugin allows you to have a nice user interface for uh, creating pages and applying updates. Go ahead and click on that. And when it's finished, You're going to want to extract it into your root of your web server. So I'm just going to double click this. And when I go back to my web root page and hit return, you'll see I have the directory here uh, pulled up. Once I click on that, we'll be shown this uh, user interface for creating a new user. This has to be done before you can continue on with Grav. Now this is only for the grav with the plugin. If you were to download just the core files, uh, you would already see the up and running page. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. And when I finish, I'm going to click on create user. So you can do that as well. You'll be shown a dashboard page. At the time of this video, it looks like we have some updates available. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way right now. Our form package is ready to be updated from 2.5 to 2.6. Okay, the update is successful and we are ready to move forward. So if you look here at the top left, you'll see the Grav logo and then a little arrow here at the, at the top. The logo will take you to the dashboard page and the little arrow will open up your website in a new tab. If you see this page, that means you have installed Graph successfully and you're ready to move forward. If you're the type of person that likes to read documentation, you can get there by going back to getgrav.org and clicking on the learn link and you'll be redirected to learn.getgrav.org. Here you'll find uh, several chapters. It looks like we have 13 for everything related to Grav. I want to switch to my text editor. I'll be using Atom. I like this editor because it allows you to install packages and two of them that you'll need is one for Twig and one for Markdown, which I believe is installed if you download Atom itself. You can download this editor at atom.io. Just click on the download link here for your uh, platform. And once you've done that, click on File, excuse me, click on Atom and open up the Preferences and click on install and you'll want to install uh, twig for syntax highlighting it's not showing up because i already have it it looks like there's another one craft cms package for adam i wonder if there's a grav no don't see anything for grav anyway you'll want to install one for twig and one for Markdown as well, if it's not already included. Let's go ahead and open up our website. And you'll see here to the left, we have all of these, these directories. The main one we're gonna be dealing with is the user. And this is where you uh, set up your configuration for your site. It's also where you manage your accounts. You can see I created my user and it created this YAML file. It's used heavily in Grav for uh, configuration, uh, especially on the pages. 
you'll see here at the top, a, a grab has something called front matter, and this allows you to create settings uh, for each of your page. You'll notice here that I've got my markdown package installed and all of the syntax highlighting is working. That I believe is bold. Uh, one hash mark renders HTML to an H1, two to an H2, and I think you can get the picture. The more you add, the more uh, you can get up to level six. If I were to edit this content, and change the exclamation point to a question mark on line five and come back to my browser and refresh. You'll see that the content has been updated. If we were to return back to our dashboard and click on pages here to the left and then click on the home item, we'd have our nice little uh, WYSIWYG editor and our content changes. I think the best advantage of having the admin plugin installed is that you get this editor here and you also have all of your options uh, that will populate your front matter with the right settings. So what I mean by that is if you change something here, we'll call this front page, and then save it by clicking at the top right. First, we'll look at it here. You'll see at the browser tab at the top, it's changed the front page, and the nav link as well has also changed the front page. In our editor, it's also changed it, and it's only changed between these three dash marks. I'll change this back to home really quick. Save that. And why don't we change this to, or I know what, we'll add an H3, header 3, and then we'll save it. And there's our content. And it's also updated here as well. The next thing I want to point out is the name of the file, which is default.md. And it's, within, it's within a folder called home and you'll notice here that it's numbered in a certain way and I'll get back to that in a minute but first I want to continue talking about the default.markdown file as we've seen and as we can see here all of our content is written in markdown and it's saved as a markdown file however the word default is special here because it refers to our theme which is antimatter the theme installed in default and a template file. If I click on default.html.twig, you'll see that I have some code here that extends the base HTML, which is our head and body and footer contents. And we have a block here with page.content. So page.content is referring to everything in the default.markdown file. You'll also notice that I have some syntax highlighting here. That's because I have the twig package installed. So if you just see plain text, you might want to install the HTML twig uh, language here. Let's create a new page. I'll collapse this for now. And we're going to follow the same naming conventions that we see here in our pages folder. So I'm going to right click and click on new folder. And then I'll type 02 dot about let's go ahead and add an about page and within that I'm going to create a new file and call it default actually let's leave that spelled incorrectly and we'll see what happens when you do that default dot markdown and I'll just copy this content here from the home page and save it here but instead I'll call this about change this to about as well oops and some dummy text here 
So I'll save that and I'll come back and refresh my page and you can see that about has now been added and when you click on that you get this nasty error message. Now here at the top left you'll see that it says default.html.twig is not defined. That means there is no template file in our theme with that name. So I'll have to spell this correctly. I'm going to rename this file default.markdown. When I come back and refresh, it's still broken. And let me see, why is that? Default.html. I guess I had to save the file. When I came back and I just saved it, it uh, I guess it needed to just, just be saved. Anyway, so as you can see, when you create a new file, you'll be sure to uh, label it default or matching the template. Looks like we have several other types, item, modular, default, and blog. We'll stick with default for now. And why don't we try creating a new page from the dashboard itself. So up at the top, I'm going to drop, click on the drop down and add page. We'll give it a page title of contact and parent page, page template default, visible auto. We'll leave these as they are and click on continue. And down here, I'll type contact, and if I highlight this and click on the H here at the top, I can select one of these drop downs. I'll make this an H1, and it renders markdown for me. Uh, how about some sample text uh, with bold letters, or bold words, I should say. Highlight that and click on B, and you'll see the markdown is generated for you. Uh, easy CMS to set up. That's true about Graph so far. It's pretty easy to set up. Very easy. We'll click on that. And then you can see there's the syntax for uh, italics. And then finally, Graph CMS is pretty cool. And then we'll save it. And we'll come back and view the site. And there we go. So I mentioned before that the folders here were created in a certain way. By default, Grav allows you to have page ordering done by uh, a numerical value dot item name. So when you create a folder, if you wanted to rearrange these uh, or you wanted to change the older order of your new folder, you would just give it a number. I want to cover one last thing before we end this basic tutorial, and that is the home alias setting. The alias is a reference to a page here, and that sets the home page of your uh, URL. If we were to change this to contact and save it, and then we'll remove this here from the front page and hit return, you'll see that contact is now our home page. And when you click on home, it gets added to the URL here at the top. I'm going to switch that back to home and save that. And that's going to be it for this basic tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed setting up Grav. It's got a nice UI, and I think it's a pretty cool CMS. Thanks for watching.